Since we'll be leaving here starting today, could you please move out? We'll also pay the $473 monthly loan. Now that my daughter is coming, we no longer need you. Okay, well then please take care of everything from now on. Even though we had supported our in-laws so much, they easily shifted their trust to the younger sister. As I reached the entrance packing my belongings, I told them something very important. Uh, by the way, it seems there's a misunderstanding, but the monthly loan repayment is. As I said that, their faces turned pale in shock. My name is Emily, a 35-year-old office worker. I've been married to Tom for three years. We met through a mutual friend who believed we'd be perfect for each other. This friend's intuition was spot on. We were drawn to each other from our first conversation. Tom also felt the same, and we began dating. We continued dating smoothly, and around two years later, he proposed to me. I was so happy as I loved him deeply. Both our families agreed to our marriage. We married and had a wonderful wedding attended by many. We then went on a honeymoon and began our life together as a married couple. We both have worked, and so we've shared household chores. Tom had lived alone for a long time and could cook, which was a huge help. Even when I was late from work, Tom helped me and started cooking so we could have dinner soon after. We cooperated in all household tasks, and life feels peaceful and stress-free. We have been grateful for each other's company. In the blink of an eye, three years passed, and our bond remains as strong as when we were newlyweds. However, a significant event occurred. Tom's father fell ill suddenly, and we rushed to the hospital. Dad, are you okay? Uck, Tom, Emily, thank you for coming. Sorry for causing you concern. It seems I overexerted myself. He had been a workaholic, often working long hours. As he aged, the stress of those years took a toll on him. For now, I'll undergo some tests and wait for the wizards. I see. Tommy and I were anxious, but more than that, my mother-in-law was quite upset. For the mother-in-law, who had always supported her husband as a housewife, it was understandable that she was upset when her partner, the mainstay of the family, was suddenly in mortal danger. Mother-in-law, are you all right? Yes, somehow. We cared deeply for both of them. We began visiting them more frequently, trying to be as supportive as possible. After a week, the father-in-law's test results came out. Although he was released from the hospital, there were concerns about a recurrence. Realizing that they might not handle another emergency, Tom proposed something. Hey, what if we live together with my parents? It was an unexpected proposal. If my parents were in the same situation, I'd want to live with them too. Of course I'm okay with that. Let's discuss it with them right away. Thank you, Emily. We quickly proposed the idea to our in-laws. Live together. Won't it be a bother? It's not a bother at all. Emily and I are worried about both of you. Thank you, both of you. Our in-laws, teary-eyed, gratefully accepted. They must have been quite anxious. We promptly moved in with them. The mother-in-law, knowing that both of us worked, took the lead in the household chores. Thanks to her, we could focus on our jobs. The father-in-law retired early and spent his days resting at home, which improved his health. We all got along wonderfully without any issues, and life was joyous. However, our in-laws made a certain proposal. I've been thinking about this for a while. How would you feel about building a new two-family house? Ha. Huh. It's a bit small for four adults to live in this house, and if Tom and Emily have children in the future, it'll be even smaller. Considering the future, I've been thinking of building a bigger house where we can live comfortably for the rest of our lives. However, it's not something we can afford with just my savings. We will need to discuss and decide together. 
Tom and I were surprised by the proposal, but we thought it wasn't a bad idea. While the current in-law's house isn't too small, it's not particularly spacious or comfortable either. Leaving here long-term might lead to stress building up between us. Perhaps buying a new house where everyone can live comfortably is a good idea. After discussing with Tom for a while, we decided to go along with the father-in-law's proposal. Subsequently, the four of us went to real estate agencies to look at various properties. We considered making it barrier-free for the in-laws and ensuring there are plenty of rooms if children come along. Ideally, it should be in a safe area, close to both a hospital and a train station, and have easy access to grocery stores. Given everyone's requirements, it seemed like it might be pricey. However, if we're going to live here for the rest of our lives, we don't want to compromise too much. Every family member felt the same way, so with determination, we decided to build our dream house, even if it cost a lot. After some time, our new home was finally completed. The exterior and interior were both new and beautiful, and it lifted our spirits just looking at it. This is really amazing. I can't be sick anymore. I want to stay healthy and live here for as long as possible. The in-laws seemed very pleased and my husband and I were equally excited. This is the house that will be with us for our entire lives. When we have kids, I want to play catch in the garden and have barbecues. That sounds great. Let's make lots of family memories here. We were overflowing with excitement and joy. Living in the house turned out to be truly comfortable, and it felt like the pinnacle of happiness. Being in a comfortable home made me even more enthusiastic about my work. Subsequently, my work went very smoothly. Both my public and private lives were fulfilling, and I genuinely felt grateful for buying this house. The months passed in the blink of an eye. Two years had passed in this house. We continued to have a good relationship with in-laws as always. We believed that the days ahead would be filled with happiness. However, at least this place for life in our new home, something unexpected happened. It was when the sister-in-law and her husband visited our new house. While this really is a nice house, it's not fair that only you guys get to live here. What are you talking about? We discussed and decided to buy this house with our parents. But I can't help but feel envious. When we were still living in a cheap winter, it feels like you're living beyond your means. The sister-in-law often visited our house during holidays and always expressed her envy. Every time, she would accuse us of being unfair. We've been paying the mortgage for this house, and it's quite a hefty amount every month. We're living within our means, earning enough to pay for this house, so there's no reason for her to complain. If we were to live here with the in-laws, it would be so much fun, don't you think? What? Can you even afford the mortgage for this house? My husband and I exchanged a glance. The sister-in-law probably just blurted out without giving it much thought. However, her careless words started to move my in-laws' hearts. It would be lovely if Kana could move and live here together. Yes, it would liven things up. Eh, hey, what are you two talking about? Haven't we been living together all this while? Ah, uh, come on, I was just saying. Exactly, there's no need to panic, right? Ha ha ha. While the in-laws tried to brush it off, it was evident that they were enticed by the idea of living with the sister-in-law. The in-laws seemed to have a particular affection for her. Even Mercer went for Tom. She is a beauty with delicate features and looks like a doll during her childhood. She is also four years younger than Tom and was born when the in-laws were older, making them dote on her even more. This pampering led her to become quite spoiled and Tom had to deal with her demanding nature. Having heard all this from Tom, I was always wary of my sister-in-law. For a while after we got married, Tom and I were both caught off guard because she didn't seem to be giving us any trouble. 
However, recently, she has been increasingly eyeing our new house. It seems she frequently visits the house during the day when you're at work. Oh, Emily, you're back? Then I'll be leaving now. Ah, I wish you'd stay a bit longer, but Tom and Emily might find it inconvenient. I don't think it's a nuisance. You might say that, but it's evident in your eyes and behavior. Unwanted guests should leave quickly. See you, Mom and Dad. Connor. When the sister-in-law left, the in-laws were visibly upset. They looked as if they wished she stayed longer, even though they didn't voice their feelings. Their faces and attitudes spoke volumes. I felt out of place and usually stayed in my room after work. When Tom came home, we'd head to the living room for dinner. The atmosphere around the dinner table got more and more tense, and there were longer silences. Tom noticed the atmosphere and began to realize that the sister-in-law was the cause. Around the time a relationship with the in-laws started to deteriorate, the sister-in-law finally made her move. One holiday, Tom and I went shopping in the morning. When we returned, there were unfamiliar shoes at the entrance. We exchanged glances, wondering if. Mother-in-law then approached us from the living room. You're finally back. We need to talk. The mother-in-law's tone was different than usual. But we entered the living room. The sister-in-law and her husband were there. Ah, you're finally here. Kana, what's going on? From today, we'll be living here. So please, leave. What? Tom and I were taken aback by her sudden declaration. What is she thinking? Moving in today? Hold on. It's ridiculous to say that all of a sudden. It's not sudden. We've discussed this with mom and dad for a long time. Is it true you discussed this with them? Tom and I knew the in-laws were swayed by the sister-in-law's words, but had no idea things had progressed this far. Can I? Her husband said, they'll take care of us from now on. I'll do the housework and even care for you when needed. Please rely on this, Mom and Dad. If our daughter is here, we don't need you anymore. A daughter-in-law who doesn't do housework or have children is no match for Kanna. What? I was deeply hurt by their words. Seeing my shocked face, the sister-in-law smirked. We'll pay the $473 monthly loan, okay? Huh? $473? It's a great deal to live in such a nice house for that. Tom and I were dumbfounded. The in-laws were already planning to kick us out. After such treatment, we couldn't continue living there. Is that so? But we can't leave immediately. Could you give us at least a week? We need to find a new place. Fine. Ah, you're looking forward to living with Kanna and her husband from today. That innocent look disappointed the sister-in-law and her husband, who were extremely happy that we decided to leave. Calm down, Mom and Dad. The house isn't going anywhere. I'm looking forward to a week from now. But my in-laws and sister-in-law's family were thrilled to drive us out. Did Tom and I seriously consider co-living for such people? We quickly arranged to view rental properties and moved out within a week, and the day to leave our home arrived. Please, take care of everything from now on. Don't ever get involved with us or come to this house again. Their words were harsh. We had supported the in-laws so much, and they switched allegiance so easily. Now we can finally live with mom and dad in this house. Living comfortably in this house with Kama is like a dream. We got rid of the nuisance after all. Our in-laws and sister-in-law kept inserting us until the last minute we were leaving. Little did they know they would face hell after this. Well, it's none of our business anymore. As I gathered our belongings and approached the entrance, I shared an important piece of information. 
Oh, by the way, it seems there's a misunderstanding about the monthly mortgage payments. It's eighteen twenty-five every month, okay? Make sure you understand that. What? At my words, their faces turned pale all at once. Hold on a second. Isn't the loan just $473 a month? You misunderstood, didn't you? This house is under our father's name, so the loan is contractually agreed to be paid off through a debit from Dad's account. Emily and I were planning to live in this house for the rest of our lives, so we told him he wouldn't have to pay. We were bearing all the costs, so I was transferring $473, and Emily was transferring $1,352 to our father's account every month. I guess father only remembered how much Tom puts in father's account each month. Moreover, we split the living expenses equally. Our parents probably never thoroughly checked the cost and assumed it wasn't a significant amount. What? No way. We can't pay $18.25 a month. We can't even cover the living expenses on top of that. How can Emily contribute so much? I don't know how you perceive me, but I'm a department head at a major corporation. I earn quite a lot. What? Emily earns much more than I do. It's simple. In-laws were unaware of this, as they looked shocked. Well, we are decided to cut ties with you, so it's up to you to support our parents from now on. No way, Emily. Tom, wait. We were wrong. Let's live peacefully together like before, okay? What, Mom and Dad? Are you planning to abandon us? You guys can repay the loan, can't you? If that's the case, shouldn't you live with those who can? That's not fair. Dad told me the loan was only about $473. That's why we came here. We've already cancelled our previous house. That's not my problem. Isn't this a mess because you wanted to move in with us in the first place? Right. Your husband earns very little, doesn't he? But you always said he's more important than Tom and pampered me. When our livelihood is at stake, all of that doesn't matter. The quarrel between the in-laws and the sister-in-law was unbearable to watch. Well, we're leaving. Wait. Regardless of what you say, we will never associate with you again. With that, Tom and I left the house and moved into our rented room. Despite the numerous messages from the in-laws, we ignored them all. According to our neighbors, the in-laws and the sister-in-law's family had no choice but to live together. However, they couldn't pay the loan and eventually had to let go of the house. When they sold the house, a considerable debt remained. Even after using the father-in-law's early retirement benefits for repayment, they still fell short. Lastly, they live in a cheap, small apartment. All three work full-time slash part-time jobs to repay their debt. Apparently, the sister-in-law's husband didn't want the burden to fall on him, so he ran away. If only the in-laws continued living peacefully with us, they wouldn't have faced these hardships. But again, it's none of our concern now. On the other hand, Tom and I found our rented apartment much cozier than anticipated. We plan to stay here for a while and save money. We live happily as our savings grow at an incredible rate. We believe it's essential to save as much as we can for the future. Still, we enjoy our lives with the occasional luxury. We aim for a happy life together in the years to come.